Hello there my RPG lovers and welcome to another video. Do you like entering people's houses with your horse? Or how about some random Bruce Lee quotes? You do? Well, Sacred 2 is the game for you. This game is definitely one of the most underrated ARPGs that I ever played, especially because it's a fully open world Diablo-like RPG with more than a few unexpected features. <laughs> It came out in 2008, which makes it even more impressive, but the game was not without its problems. The first Sacred game came out in 2004, and I gained the impression that the fans of this series loved the first game a bit more than the sequel. I never actually played the first game, so I can't really speak about that. Anyway, we're going to talk about every major aspect of Sacred 2. How well it aged, and is it worth playing in 2022? In the tavern, at this time of day? What will people think of me? But before we continue with the video, a quick word from today's sponsor. Ace Defender is a strategy RPG available on Android and iOS devices. This game combines turn-based RPG battles with tower defense elements. It has 40 plus chapters along with almost 2000 levels and 48 heroes. You can level them up, combine heroes how you see fit and equip them with gear to create a powerful lineup. Two new heroes are added every two weeks. Ace Defender has PvE and PvP modes to play. You can explore dungeons, engage in trials and level up your heroes to collect rare items. PvP mode involves arena where you get to fight with other players on your server or across server in different arenas. You can also adjust the speed of the gameplay up to four times. There is a new hero called Brenda that you can use in PvP and PvE modes. She deals massive damage, she limits the opponent's damage as well, and she has regenerating health. There is a mysterious new world called Realm of Deities, where you can build your castle, develop technology, and train soldiers to conquer the city. On the Realm of Deities map, you can defeat all kinds of monsters and get rewards, fight together with your allies, and gain more power for your heroes through the magical research. Download the game by using my link in the description, and you'll get 10 Royal Recruit tickets after completing Chapter 2, Level 8. Choosing a class in this game is a bit different compared to your typical Diablo-like RPGs. You can choose between 7 different classes and all of them are kinda unique. It's not a simple choice between a warrior, a mage and a ranger. It was refreshing to see something like this, especially back then because RPGs usually tend to stick with the basic formula when it comes to classes. Every class has a short background story that plays when you select them in a typical Diablo style. I am one of the Seraphim, the ethereal beings who have been watching over the fate of the world since the beginning of time. What's not so typical is the two different campaign modes that you can select, Shadow or Light. The differences between these two campaigns are not huge, you will do the same quests for the most part. But there are some variations in the main quest, so if you like the game, you should definitely try both of these campaigns. This was a big deal back in the day, but mostly because of the multiplayer, because you could only team up with players on the same campaign. Some classes like the Sephirim and the Inquisitor can only select one campaign, but you have the option to choose the campaign with all other classes. You also have to select one god to worship and just like the campaigns, not all gods are available for every class. You get one major spell from the god of your choice, that's pretty much it. Every character class begins the game on a different place on the map, which is a great touch. The story is also a bit different, as well as the starting quest and the cutscene. However, it won't take long for you to start doing the same main quest with every character class. Like I said, it mostly depends on your choice of campaign. That's the deal with the main quest, but as you might expect, you will pick up a ton of side quests along the way. So if you choose to do a lot of side quests in the beginning, your experience with the game can be extremely different depending on which class you choose. You can wander off in a totally different direction by following a quest, that's what I mean. And since the world is totally open right from the beginning, you can go wherever you want. I played with Shadow Warrior for the purpose of this video and just a couple of hours with Inquisitor. Back in the day I played a lot with the Temple Guardian class as well and I highly recommend playing with him if you want to try out the game. Ah! What do you mean? Or maybe a Dragon Mage, which is another really cool class. Anyway, Shadow Warrior begins in a tomb, where he gets resurrected by a necromancer. Then he tries to kill you, because that makes sense. The main story is all over the place, and I honestly don't know what's going on for the most part, I just go from one quest to another. 
what I found really cool about the story or the game in general is how you can meet other character classes in the worlds. Not long after I started playing the game with the Shadow Warrior, I met the Inquisitor in a tavern. That's the same place where you start the game if you choose to play with the Inquisitor. So I'm guessing that all characters can be found on their starting locations, which is really cool. The thing is, Sacred 2 doesn't take itself too seriously when it comes to the story. Get lost, scum! I wanted to describe the story and the game in general as unintentionally funny, but that's actually not true. Sacred 2 is intentionally a really goofy and a funny game. Look, all you need to know about the story is that you're going to get some quality laughs from it from time to time. I was able to accomplish a small wonder today. I managed to make the air smelly out of nothing. The light tone of the game is one of the reasons why you can easily pick it up and play for a couple of hours, or the whole day if you wish to. That brings us to the most important part of the game, which is obviously the gameplay. The gameplay in Sacred 2 works really different compared to traditional Diablo-like RPGs. There is no hand-holding in the game, so you have to learn how everything works by yourself, by just experimenting. That might be intimidating for some players, but the game won't punish you for failing. However, that's not an excuse for poorly explained features. Even though I personally prefer to learn things by myself, this can be a big barrier to entry for some players. So what makes the Sacred 2 gameplay so unique? First of all, action combat is noticeably slower compared to pretty much every other Diablo-like RPG. It's not that responsive and snappy, which can definitely be off-putting to some people. If you want to try this game out and you expect a fast-paced isometric gameplay, you will be disappointed. The thing is, the way that gameplay systems work in this game is perfect for the slower gameplay pace. Before we start talking about the combat arts, which is the main gameplay system in Sacred 2, we have to talk about the most basic element of the gameplay first. How it feels to kill enemies by just clicking on them. Ow! If you watched any of my videos about Diablo-like RPGs, you know I always find this really important. After all, you're going to spend so much time in these games doing the basic auto-attack. I have to admit that Sacred 2 is not really good when it comes to this because, like I said before, the combat is not that snappy and responsive. Some classes definitely feel a lot better than others, but I'm talking about my experience with the Shadow Warrior. The melee mechanics lack the sense of impact and fighting enemies in melee range is really janky at times. On the other hand, range combat and magic is a lot better choice, but that doesn't mean the melee abilities can be fun to play. And besides, every class in the game has actual spells, so you don't exactly have to stick with melee combat. Shadow Warrior can use bows as well and even cast spells with ranged bow attacks. It's a really flexible combat system in general, even though different classes can only use certain weapon types. Another major factor when it comes to basic auto attacks with your weapon is the hit chance. Yeah, hit chance, remember that? Your ability to hit enemies depends on your skill with the weapon type you're using. I know that even some modern action RPGs like Path of Exile and Grim Dawn have a hit chance mechanic, but it's not even comparable to older RPGs. It feels less punishing in newer games, that's what I mean. Anyway, even though the gameplay can feel pretty janky at times, there is some great attention to detail when it comes to gameplay systems. So let's talk about that. Each character class has three different ability trees with some active and passive abilities. The way you learn these abilities is by looting the runes on enemies and by using them from the inventory. The game is really generous when it comes to the drop chance of these items, so you can get all of your abilities pretty early in the game. And you will find the runes for other classes as well, which can make it a lot easier to start the game with a different class. The way you cast your abilities can be as simple as using the right mouse button, but the real potential of this gameplay is learning how to use the combat arts. Combat Arts allow you to combine a couple of abilities in a sequence. You have 4 Combat Arts in total and each of them allows you to have up to 4 different abilities chained together in a sequence. So it's all up to you when it comes to combining different abilities. For example, in one of my Combat Arts I have a couple of summoning and healing abilities. My second Combat Art has a single target and AoE ability and so on. My Inquisitor has a damaging spell and Explode Corpses spell in the same Combat Art. So if my first spell kills the enemy, it follows it up with some AoE damage from Exploding Corpse's spell. It's really fun to play around with different combinations. And of course, you can have the same spells in different combat arts, but they will share the cooldown. You can experiment a lot with combat arts if you want to find the most enjoyable playstyle for your class. So yeah, combat arts are basically a combo system for casting a couple of different abilities in a sequence. 
By the way, if it happens that your current target is dead and you casted a long combat art, it will continue casting on the nearby enemy. I think that's really impressive actually. The thing is, you can't always rely on just casting a combat art and be done with it. Some abilities are better used outside of combat arts. It's a really flexible system and like I said, you should experiment a bit with your abilities. The gameplay in Sacred 2 can feel like you're playing an RTS game, especially when you start using the combat arts. This is why the stats on your character are really important, because Sacred 2 doesn't have a lot of skill-based abilities. Except the ranged projectiles that you can avoid and kiting the enemies can be considered as a skill move, I guess. As you might expect, you have skills and ability system as well. When you level up, you can increase the skill of your choice and put points in one of your attributes. The itemization is another major aspect of every Diablo-like RPG and Sacred 2 does an amazing job with this. Literally the first armor that I picked up with my Inquisitor has a cool visual effect. I think that visual progression is also really important in every RPG basically. This is my level 5 Inquisitor and he already looks amazing. The customization itself is crazy as well, you have 11 different armor slots. As you play through the game you will find a bunch of armor pieces for all character classes. Some items can give you bonus art points or skill points damage, which is obviously important for creating your builds. You start the game with only one weapon slot, but as you level up, you will get a couple of more. This was always a bit confusing to me because you don't see the weapons you're using in your inventory. It's not a huge problem, it's just a bit unconventional. You can easily switch between your different weapon slots by a press of a button. And yes, in case you're wondering, that's a lightsaber. Like I said before, you can effectively use different weapon types without losing the utility of your spells. Combat arts work well with every weapon type your character can use. Now let's talk about some miscellaneous gameplay features. I mentioned in the beginning that you can have a horse, but that's an understatement. Sacred 2 has a fully developed mounting system. What I mean by fully developed is that you can explore the land with your horse, use horse abilities and even fight on the horseback. Buying a horse is a bit expensive and it depends on the horse itself. They have different abilities and unique looks. This was mind blowing to me back in the day because I never played a Diablo like RPG which had mounts, let alone the mounted combat system and horse abilities. Even today this feature is a novelty in these types of games. When it comes to quests, it's your typical RPG busy work, especially the side quests. But since the game is really goofy, it will make you laugh more often than not. For example, this dude lost his microphone and you have to get it back. Yes, you heard that right, microphone. By the way, Blind Guardian is a real metal band who did music for the game. So you can consider this as a small easter egg, but you have equally goofy side quests to find. Some side quests will unlock special NPCs who can offer you different services in the city. One little nitpick I have with quests in general is the question mark symbol. In every RPG ever, the exclamation mark is the sign for available quests, while the question mark is the sign for being able to finish the quest. In Sacred 2 that's totally the opposite and I have a sneaky suspicion that's on purpose, considering the goofy nature of the game. And the last, but definitely not least, we have the visuals. There is something really appealing to me about the visuals in games from this time period. You know, Oblivion, Gothic 3, Titan Quest and so on. I can't exactly put my finger on it, but I'm pretty sure it has something to do with the vibrant color palette with semi-realistic art style. First of all, I think the game really holds up today, especially when it comes to textures. The shadows are really simplistic though. But more importantly, you will explore a lot of unique terrains in the game, as well as big cities. The map is really impressive in some specific parts. The game world doesn't feel that flat, like in many isometric RPGs from back then. There is a decent amount of verticality on the map. The transparency effect in the game is not that great, which can be really frustrating in some areas. Although you can rotate the camera, which kinda offsets this problem, but it's really disorienting, at least to me. Anyway, let's sum up my impressions. Sacred 2 has a lot to offer if you can tolerate some of its shortcomings. Playing around with combat arts is really interesting and every class in the game has something unique to offer. The combat is slow paced which will turn some people off but the customization is vast and really deep. You can spend more than 100 hours playing only one class. The big open world is another reason for that and the exploration itself is really interesting. A fully developed mounting system is another big reason for such an enjoyable exploration. The game relies on humor to carry the whole story so don't expect some mind blowing writing and great storytelling. You know how to die. So should you play it in the current year? Well, if you want to try out something different and you never played it before, you definitely should. 
but if you expect a fast-paced action combat like in some modern action RPGs, then definitely not. But you would be missing out on a really unique experience. <laughs> And that will be it for this video. Tell me your thoughts about Sacred 2 in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe for more RPG content. If you want to support the channel in the long run, consider becoming a Patreon or a YouTube member. You can get your name on the end credits as well as some other perks like early access to videos, Discord roles, my plans for future content, etc. etc. That will be all and I'll see you in the next one.